Hey guys, I'm about to share with you one of my closely regarded secrets. I'm about to share with you how I was able to get a former employer to actually give me startup money for a business venture. When I return on the Eric McNeil Be Free Show. Black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual. Free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Hey guys, welcome. You have just discovered the Eric McNeil Be Free Show, where we talk about being financially independent, responsible for self, enjoying life, and empowering others free. So. On this episode, I want to give you some information that I usually don't discuss. It's one of my secrets that I carry along close to me. But uh, I'm going to share some information because I see that a lot of you guys just don't get it when it comes to uh, being professional, when it comes to giving great customer service, when it comes to delivering with a smile and some of you guys truly want to get it but there's so much bad advice circling circling around you people telling you, oh they shouldn't be happy when they go to work if the, the, the workers not paying them no I'm about to tell you all of that is wrong just 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 trash throw out that trashy advice and listen uh, to me tell you what you need to do uh, you know if you want to be successful because if you want to be successful in the work environment, then you need to perform your job well. You need to perform it with a smile. You need to go uh, beyond and above every moment of the way, every step of the way. Why, if you're not uh, uh, able to perform your job with a smile at work, you don't need to be holding that job. You need to give it up. Give the job up and go find something where you can smile, you know, even if it means creating your own job. But just to think that, oh, well, the employer don't treat me, the employer don't treat me well, the employer don't pay me well, I'm not going to come to work with a smile, I'm not going to be happy, I'm not going to, well, you need to leave, right? If the employer is not treating you well and you're still there, then whose fault is that? You leave and go find something else. And uh, if you can't find something where the employer will treat you well, then you create something for yourself and stop going there and talking, I ain't going to smile and the employer ain't paying me. Like, if the employer pay you some more money, that's going to make a difference. No. Uh, you got to do your job with a smile first. And then at some point you're going to be valued right so I'm gonna share with you some stuff and um, this is gonna help you to understand how I was able to lift myself up uh, you know and get this one employer to actually fund my business uh, new technology network services years ago so um, let's go back I'm gonna go back to uh, my graduation from college 1995 okay so I was interviewing for a position at Eli Lilly and Company and I told the recruiter that I had a couple criteria if, if I was going to come on with the board with uh, this company right um, and you know they used to call me my partner uh, used to call me Shaquille McNeil at the time because he was like man you be going into companies interviewing like you were a, a ball ball player like Shaquille O'Neal he said, we're going to start calling you Shaquille McNeil. Um, because it, with me, at that point, it was the highest bidder. Like, I had the, the criteria, I had the, uh, uh, the references, I mean, on my resume. Like, hey, y'all got to pay. You got to pay to play. So, um, I told the recruiter at Eli Lilly and Company that, you know, Bruce, if you want me to come on board, then here's what I need. One, you know, of course, I needed the good pay now, but... I needed to be in the uh, computer networking department, the, part, the, the department responsible for uh, networking computers. They had a huge computer networking department where they used Windows NT at the time. I said, I want to be in that department. It was called ISMS, Information Systems Managed Servers. 
And I told him, too, I need my uh, wife. Y'all need to hire my wife. She had just gotten her, uh, she's my ex-wife now, but she had just gotten her master's degree. And um, so I was like, y'all need to hire us, like, too. So they came back to me. It's like, Eric, they don't hire uh, new recruits in that department. He's like, there's no new recruits. He said, you have to come on as an analyst first. And then once you uh, are on board as an analyst, then you can apply for that department in ISMS. He said, but all of those people are experienced. You can't go over there. I said, whoa, Bruce. <laughs> I said, man, if that's the case, then ain't nothing else for us to talk about. Can't. It was good, but I'm on to the next one. He's like, he was like, well, come on, Eric. Once you get on board, all you have to do, man, is apply. They're going to they gonna accept you, man. I mean, look at your resume. They're going to accept you. I said, well, they're going to have to accept me before I get hired. Simple as that. So he finally came back. They gave in, and they decided to make an exception, right? So they made an exception for me because of my previous history, and um, they see I wasn't going to bullet. They say, but now we, you know, uh, we don't have no job for your wife yet. Once she gets up there, she can start applying. So I gave in on that one, but I got into the ISMS department. And as you know, I started at the, the bottom rung in that department because one, here you got this black guy, uh, the only black guy in the department. And then on top of that, he's a new recruit. Don't even supposed to be in this department. So they had me going around to the printers, punching in IP addresses all over the building, which I was grateful for because it, they started me at this low level. And as I went through this, I knew everything about a network. Like they only knew, most of them, you know, just knew how to uh, troubleshoot a server and stuff. But where they started me at, I was able to learn everything. So by the time I left, I was the man. And that was about a year later. So when I got ready to leave, this was in 1996 when I was ready to leave. I graduated 1995, worked there like mid 1996. And at that point, it was unheard of to go on the internet uh, looking for a job. Nobody used the internet like that. You know, you might just use it for a little research. It had just came out. So you, nobody was going on there looking for a job. Um, but in 1996, I started looking for a job. And I knew that the Olympics was coming to Atlanta. And I said to myself, whoa, the Olympics coming to Atlanta over the next 10 years, that mean a lot of money going to be pumped into Atlanta. I can go to Atlanta and make a lot of money. I can get rich down in Atlanta. That was my thinking. So I was trying to get to the Atlanta, Atlanta area uh, by the time that Olympics came in because I knew the money was going to start rolling through Atlanta. So I, was gonna, I, was, I had a plan to start a business in Atlanta and get rich in Atlanta. And, um, and back then, this is how uh, I looked for a job. Like, you know, I, this is a regular notebook, and this sucker is about 25 years old. And I went to, I would go, I was in Indianapolis, and I would go to the bookstore and purchase an Atlanta newspaper from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution and start cutting out the classified ads and actually categorizing uh, all the things that I thought was applicable to my skill set. So I just cut out the ad, you see that? And I still have this to this day. So all of these are ads from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution uh, newspaper around the 1996 time. And I came across, and I was also looking on the internet. And now, as fate would have it, there was an ad in here, right here, well, I think right here, that I also saw on the internet. So that was a sign to me. So I was like, whoa, that's a sign. This company, UDC, blah, blah, blah. I interviewed with them. They actually made a job offer. I told my supervisor at Eli Lilly that I was giving them about a couple months and then I'm going off to Atlanta. And they was like, whoa, Eric, n n absolutely not. So the person that could barely get into the department 
just uh, a year ago now they say you can't leave Eric nah you ain't you ain't going nowhere and he was like how did you find this job I said well I saw the job on the internet for one and so you trust that it was like Eric the internet do you trust it you you gonna take a job that you saw I said yeah I'm gonna take it <laughs> it's so um they was paying me like 20 percent uh, 20, 25 percent more. So I was, that was it for me. It's like, Sips. so anyway, they couldn't hold. So they, they tried to do everything to hold on to me. They, uh, at that point, they wanted to get my. They found, they found the job for my wife. At that point, it's like, we got a job. Like, she can come in. Nah, I was like, nah, that's all right, cat. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> We're going to Atlanta. So I made my way on down to Atlanta, Georgia and began working for this company called UDC uh, in the Norcross area. Now, I got there two weeks before the Olympics started in Atlanta, and my first uh, big job for them was a vo I had to volunteer to uh, actually install the network for the BBC at the Olympics. Right, BBC, I think they, they, the equipment got there, arrived late. And this was like on a Friday evening. Nobody, you know, none of the consultants weren't trying to work and do that. And, you know, the equipment came on that Friday and it was like, uh, the BBC need this, this network installed and, and we need somebody to go out there, install these workstations and configure the net, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, no problem, I'll do it. And I'd just be like, i I do it, you know, because to me, I'm getting knowledge, but other to everybody else was like, don't look at me. So um, I took one of the uh, the workers with me. You know, I was the systems engineer responsible for the design, and I had a worker uh, who's like my install guy that um, you know would help me. So we went out there. And I was like, we're gonna do this, 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 and we worked through the whole night. He's like, here, we're going to take a break. We're going to stop. We're going to come back. And I was like, no, we ain't coming back. We're going to get this network installed. This is the one go in the morning. They're going to come. It's going to be finished, and we're not coming back. So that was my work ethic. When Eric started, Eric didn't take no breaks. He, people knew that. It's like, you go out there, there, you ain't, you ain't taking no break. Eric going to work. And it's going to work until the job is done. So a lot of people, they didn't like that. They didn't, they didn't want to go out with me. It was like, mm-mm. So um, we got that network done, and they was happy, right? So that was first feather in my cap over there. So, um, so I developed a reputation that when stuff was wrong, when they were in a bind, they needed something bad, then... Eric was the one that they called on, you know. So Eric was the one uh, when and that when everything was falling apart, they could call on, and that's the reputation I developed there. So it turned out to be that um, UDC sold the company to GE. GE at the time was trying to that was General Electric. They was trying to develop this huge IT. Uh, uh, department and they didn't have the workers to do that but they had a lot of money so they ran around the uh, the world purchasing these smaller IT uh, value-added resellers and IT consulting companies and one of them was our company so when they came and purchased our company my directors who were over me found out and they they weren't happy they said you know the owner sold and you know, they really left them in a bad spot, so they weren't happy. So they knew a company right down the street who was trying to recruit us out of there, and they went right to that company and cut a deal with the owner of this company called Sun Data. Now, Sun Data was owned by a gentleman also named Eric, Eric Prokow. And Eric Prokow uh, was in the business of AS4 refurbishing AS400s. That's where you take an old uh, AS400, which was we called a mini frame computer. wasn't quite a mainframe, like huge, huge, and it wasn't a server, like a small. It was like a mid-range computer. So they would refurbish these old computers and resell them. And Eric Prokow, he made the company, uh, actually came in as the CEO, 
and he turned the company around, made it profitable. And um, so he wanted to get into the business of IT consulting and he needed uh, some skill sets like ours. So a friend of mine came to me and said, Eric, he said, they're going to come to you. They want us to go to Sun Data and they paying whatever you can negotiate with them. He's like, so I'm telling you now. I was like, what? He's like, and they need your skill set. <laughs> hey, I say, oh, is that right? So um, what he was talking about when he said they need your skill set is that I was the point man because I was the only person in the company at, a time, at the time that had this magic piece of paper. You see this magic piece of paper? Microsoft with Bill Gates' signature on it, systems engineer. Yeah, I was the only person in the company that was a Microsoft certified systems engineer. And I was a key to their negotiation because when they had me, it allowed them to apply to become a Microsoft certified solutions provider. And they needed Eric to be able to do that. And so I was the key. So when they called and negotiate with me, my salary then went up like another 50%. They was like, you want what? I said, yeah, that's what I want. All right, all right, we'll see. And he came back, okay, Eric, you got it. <laughs> so just like that. So within a span of two years, when I left Eli Lilly and went to UDC, uh, my salary jumped about 25%. Then when I left UDC and went to Sunday, it jumped about another 50%. So I was doing good. Uh, you know, in a span of two years, I was like, okay, I can do that. But I had the work ethic. Right? I, I was always the one smiling, going out on these terrible jobs, going out on these high stressful jobs, and I, never, I always gave them more than I took. That was the key. Like, I didn't ever complain, even though uh, they were making much more money off of me uh, than I was making. I never complained one bit. So they understood that my work ethic was impeccable. And when I went to uh, Sun Data, we all, uh, you know, a group of us left. And the directors became vice presidents that took us over. That They became two directors. They became Henry and Michael. They became vice presidents of Sun Data at this point. So everybody was, you know, doing well. And um, Eric went there. And I had the same work ethic at Sun Data that I had at UDC that I had at um, Eli Lilly, and anywhere else I ever worked, I had that same work ethic, and I brought it there. And so the, um, they didn't have a problem with Eric. Like when you saw Eric Billable, this is the types of, they would pass these, you had a certain quota. You had to do so many hours of billable uh, with different companies, and they gave you a quota. And so each month, if you went over your quota, then they would pass out these, these little certificates, right? You see this? The president would go around and pass out these little certificates. And this says, congratulations on exceeding your business objectives for March 1997. Eric McNeil, 149%. That means I went over 49% of 100, right? You only had to get 100 to make you outstanding. And I hit 149%. Keep the momentum going. I was getting these things like every month. I was hitting it. Hoo, hoo. It's like this van is crazy. Yeah. So this one, boom, there's another one. Same thing. So, and that's also uh, should be a note to you guys that a lot of times you don't just have to give employees money. You just give them something to recognize the good job that they're doing. And so something like this, you know, they gave employees, make them feel good. Um, this month was August 1997, Eric McNeil, 136%. So I was meeting my objectives like this. And I had developed uh, a reputation with the company and the customers that I was servicing that uh, when they needed something done right and they needed somebody to come in at the last moment and do it, they somebody needed to be saved, call Eric McNeil. Simple. <laughs> Simple. Uh, Eric McNeil was the guy. Um, so at this point, Eric McNeil at Sun Data was the man. And I had decided at the about a year, it's time for Eric McNeil to start his own company. 
Now, one of my customers who I had already, uh, who I had met at, through UDC, established a relationship with me, became a very good friend, and he was one of my first customers when I was still working. He was giving me business on the side. He was like, Eric, um, since, you do, you, since you the consultant coming out here, you say you want to start your own company. I just give you this work uh, directly. You don't even have to go. So, you know, you need to go ahead and make your moves and come out full time. And, um, you know, you need to go ahead and start your business. So, uh, it was a good, he became a good friend of mine, Fred. Um, became like my, one of my mentors. But he encouraged me. He was like, Eric. Start your company. Do your, you know, start, get out. So I was like, you're right, Fred. Let me. So I started making my moves. I say, um, Henry, Mike, these are my, the VPs that brought me over from UDC to Sunday. I say, hey, got some good news and some bad news. Good news is I'm going to start me a company, you know. Hey, bad news, I got to leave, y'all. They were like, Eric, nah, you, you, you can't leave, Eric. No, 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 no. Because, you know, Eric still had that, that magic piece of paper, too. Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer paper. So they were sweating bullets like, hey, you know, I think that by that time, though, they had another one in the, in the company by that time, another one. But, um, you know, you, you, I was still pretty valuable to them um, because of my, the customer, the clients, you know, because I had some clients loved Eric, you know. So, um, so as it stands... When I told them that there was no changing, I was gone, they said, okay, okay, um, can you consult with us then through your own company? I said, yeah, I can consult. So I prepared a little paper, one page agreement, just basically saying that these are the terms and conditions. You know, and this was like October 1997. I said, thank you for selecting new technology network services to fill your professional service needs, blah, 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 and we'll uh, basically provide this service uh, at $135 per hour, uh, plus any out-of-pocket expenses, including travel incurred by NTNS in performing the services. And I said, you know, fee is to be paid in full within two business days. And like, hey, come on, come on. So we finally agreed, okay, you pay it within five business days of me invoicing you. And that was the agreement. Um, and they paid my $135 an hour plus any travel out-of-pocket costs, right? If I had out-of-pocket costs, you paid those too. If I traveled, you paid that too, right? Uh, and even the time, you know, all of that, you, you paid. So they started doing that based on this. Now, this was just um, using, using me when they needed me, using me, and, and I was like, okay, that was cool. And so anyway, one of my friends contacted me that was still with the company. He said, Eric, I need to meet with you. I said, okay. He said, man, guess what? I said, what? They talking about you, man. I said, they talk what? What they talking about me for? I ain't there nothing. Just... He said, man, listen. There's a project you started, and nobody can't finish that project. And the customer is upset. They, they didn't want to use you, Eric, on that project because they say, you know, you're too expensive. They say, the way that you're billing them, they say, you're too expensive, Eric. So they say, but they can't get this project done that you started with that thin client stuff. And they say the customer has been upset. And they say the customer uh, then said that if they don't get you back on the job, they're going to drop this multi-million dollar contract that they got with them. Say, they say, so you necessary. So I'm telling you now, you need to go, and they're going to come back and uh, try to call you, and what you need to do is you need to make them buy a whole bunch of hours from you. Uh, they say, you know, he was like, man, because they need you. I was like, whoa, snap. <laughs> I was like, oh, my man, thank you. Poof. And so... I waited for that call, you know, the next couple of days, I got that call. Henry Brennan said, Eric, I need to talk to you. He said, what you talking about here? Okay, I'm coming. So he was like, well, you know, we want you to do a few, you know, a few more hours. And from my estimate, I could have completed that project, maybe another hundred hours, I could have completed the project and it had been all good. 
So he said, well, we want you to come and say, you know, but you give us a better rate than you've been giving us, $135 an hour. Eric, come on, you hitting us over the head. I said, okay, I can give you a better rate, but you're going to have to do something for me now, Henry. He said, what's that? You're going to have to buy some block hours. From You're going to have to commit to uh, some block. You can't just bill me and think I'm just going to be here at your beck and call. You're going to have to buy some block hours. Okay, put it on paper, Eric. So I went back and I put it on paper, and I brought them just another simple one-page agreement. And that one-page agreement, I said, uh, NTNS submits the following block time services proposal to Sundata for approval and signature. NTNS will provide Sundata 300 block hours, services based on $120 an hour totaling $36,000, amount to be invoiced in three consecutive months beginning November 1997 in the amount of $12,000. So basically what I was telling them is that they're going to have to buy all 300 hours up front at $120 an hour, and then now we can decide, you know, a little bit on how we utilize those hours. But in addition to those block hours, I told them that uh, any travel I do, even if I got on, even if you put me on a plane, I'm going to be charging you uh, $65 an hour just for sitting on the plane. I'm going to be charging you $65 an hour just for my time, even when I'm doing nothing, even when you're trying to have me travel. And then, in addition to that, you're going to have to pay me expenses. If I eat, you have to pay me that. My hotel, you have to pay me that. That doesn't include my hours. So, they paid for everything. So, I was like, you paying for everything up front. And that was the ultimatum that I gave them. And um, they wanted that project done so bad that... Bam! These was the first two checks. They agreed, and that thirty-six thousand dollars they funded my business. So the first check they cut was uh, December the fifth, nineteen ninety-seven. You see that? Let me see. I don't know if you can see that, but anywho, uh, this was for four thousand two hundred thirty-two dollars and fifty cents. That showed their commitment. And then, uh, December the 12th, 1997, they cut another $16,237.50. You see that? Those were the first two checks from this one-page agreement. But they did that because I had established such an impeccable record with them and an impeccable record with the various customers that people wanted Eric. But I had to establish that. I just didn't go in there and they gave me this. Eric was the one who came in there every time there was a problem. Eric was the one who smiled, uh, who made them uh, feel as though their project was going to get completed, uh, who gave them hope, right? When you messing with this kind of equipment and uh, you messing with companies' revenues, if that network goes down and uh, they start losing tens of thousands, uh, even hundreds of thousands of dollars a day, then I was the one who made sure that I could mitigate and control those costs for them and make sure that I was the insurance policy. So yes, they paid with no problem. This was uh, half of it and they paid the other check with no problem whatsoever. But that was through diligence and hard work and coming in there with a smile, delivering good customer service people, being professional people. I wasn't waiting to, I actually made something before, uh, you know, I started smiling. I started smiling a long time ago. I knew how to service the customer, period. Right? I, I was the one who, when there was business issues that the technical people didn't understand, I could translate. I was like the translator. I knew language from business side. I knew language from the technology side. 
So when each department couldn't understand the other department, they used Eric to intervene. Eric could understand both sides of the house, right? Because all this time, I'm volunteering for this, I'm volunteering for that. I'm putting myself in a position to understand everything throughout the company that I can. So when it came down to it, the person who understood it, yes, and had all the keys to the castle, was Eric. Plain and simple, plain and simple. Um, here's a, uh, a news story. You see that? That's a news story that, uh, from the Atlanta Journal-Constitution in 2002. They ran a news story on me in their tech uh, section. And that was my mug back then, right? I was a Mac daddy back then, boy. But anyway, it says uh, engineer upgrades to owner. Uh, computer internships laid the foundation. And it just talked about uh, my journey to becoming, you know, uh, a business owner and my background. So, you know, this is basically how you do it, people. You have to go in there with a smile. You have to go in there delivering good quality service and you have to give more than you take. See, I was always giving more than I knew. I knew what they were charging, uh, what they were billing me for the customer. You know, they would, they would be billing me for the customer like $600 an hour, right? And, you know, I might uh, make a fraction of that even when I was just billing them, even at my $135 an hour rate. I still knew that they was going to make a good profit. Right? And even when I was working for them, um, they was making even more, of course, from me. But I wasn't sitting up mad and angry and upset. I never approached a job like that. Even before I started making good money in the IT sector, um, I would volunteer for jobs just to get certain knowledge and understanding. Right? So I've never approached jobs where I'm going to go in there angry and... Uh, resentful, uh, you know, I just never approached it like that. If, if, if a job is going to make me feel like that, then I believe it's time for me to, I would rather leave and go create my own opportunity than to come into your job angry and resentful and hateful and mad like some of these people are suggesting you should do on the internet. Oh, uh, no, nobody's, you know, the wages that these people get um, they're not going to come in there happy and ready to work. Well, then they should go and create their own job so they can be happy and, re and ready to work. I say to you, it doesn't matter what your employer is or is not paying you. Go there happy. Go there ready to work. Go there with a smile and give more than you take. Like, if, you, if I don't feel that you're paying me, I'm not going to come into your job uh, to uh, steal. I'm not going to come into your job. Uh, to try and take what I can get out of there and, uh, you know, and um, just uh, go to sleep on your premises. I'm not going to do that because that speaks about me and my integrity. And um, I'd rather for my own integrity to be intact than to go in there and your job angry, okay? So anyway, I just want to bring you that. That was how... I got my them to pay my startup costs, and they paid it with a smile. Just like I gave a smile uh, to them all those that time, you know, when they paid my check, you know, they had a smile, you know, because they got what they wanted. I got what I wanted. That was uh, the start of new technology network services. Um, they, they made it easy, so I didn't have to worry about, you know, how's I going to uh, make it and survive and this and that. You know, I was able to go out and celebrate uh, for a while, you know, and didn't have to worry about it. You know, this was 1997. They hit a brother off of that $36,000, boy, and shoot, brother was happy. Man, you just don't know. Hey, hey, you know, so uh, at any rate, um, I hope you get something from that. Uh, definitely, if you like what we're talking about, hit that subscribe button. Like, share, comment, give me your feedback uh, on working with employees, you know, and let me know, uh, you know, what your approach is. And also, you can check me out at facebook.com forward slash 
Eric McNeil is free. Okay? So, as always, until next time, Oorah Ahuru. Now be free. <laughs>